I am quickly just jumping on to show you the trades that I'm doing today. And I want to try and get better at this. I know I keep saying I'll try and do better with it, but it's just because I trade on the go sometimes depending on life and stuff like that. Since it is for me 10, 40, 6 in the morning and I have things to do in my regular life usually. I don't sit at the computer all day long typically and I like the alerts to come through when I'm trading versus like sitting all day at my computer. However, I have set aside today for you this morning so I could show you guys like how I would trade today. So I'm recording it. I did get a little bit late of a start. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I'll walk you through what has happened already and I will show you the trades that I have running. So market for me opens at 930 because I am on Eastern Standard Time. So you guys can see I'm on the 15 minute chart for US 30. Uh, this is just basically what the market was looking like. You guys know by now that I like to mark my charts up like uh, you know this is how I do it if you don't know please go watch all those videos I don't want to make this super long just showing you guys the live trade situation basically what I did was I targeted a high up here on the oh, I'll show you on the one hour I like to mark my charts up that's what the yellow lines are those are my major support and resistance areas that I am marking I did not go all the way up here because I wasn't really targeting that as a take profit right now so I went with this nice uh, level here you can see lots of touches touches all in here lots of consolidation that happened and uh, the most recent one over here so that was the area that I was targeting for my potential next take profit that was a major area of resistance then I have these down here this is another one I marked off as a potential low area and then the lowest low and the white are my miners so you guys know already I will at my higher time frame and if my LMI is saying that it's green and we're buying and the RSI is above 50, then I'm buying. And obviously look at the markets. So before even doing anything, even if you are like me and you usually like to have your indicators off first, sorry, I started ahead of time with this video, but even if you're just doing this where you're marking it up, like it's pretty clear the market's in an uptrend for the last couple of days. So that doesn't really take many indicators to tell you that. So use your common sense if you're not really sure what it's doing or one of your indicators is like going back and forth from the red or green color. A lot of you do send me messages asking about that. Forget the indicator. You just need to use your eyes. Those are free. Just look at the market. What is it doing? It's clearly pushing up. Obviously, I'm looking for buys. That's what I'm looking for here. I was interested to see what was going on. Did my markup. At the time of my markup, I was looking at this zone, like I said, this area of minor support that had formed over here and was becoming resistance. You can see where it's hitting. And then at the time when I entered, it had me this candle here on opening and that one hour candle on opening had pushed up into this new zone. So that is the area that I was interested in watching. Once opening did that, I was interested to look for buys because we're now breaking through the, to this zone. So I dropped to my 15 because I know where, what direction I want to be looking for. And then I was looking on my 15 just to make sure that everything makes sense on my 15 as well. So I will show you guys 15 what it looks like and put the TDS back on because that's the one I was using. This is actually what my setup looked like when I was deciding to do this. And just so you guys know, the star had actually printed back here at 9.15. Market opened here at 9.30. I did not trade opening candle. I waited till opening candle had closed. And then this candle is the candle that I was interested in. So once I saw that market open had had this nice rejection wick here. I'm trying to zoom in so you guys can see it. This nice rejection wick that happens. I liked that. That's a very reassuring sign that they tried to test this area, this price pushed up off of it, and they're going up. So that made me happy to see, and I was confident to get in the trade. I was going to go for a buy because everything winds up. As you can see, where I entered, oh, I'm sorry, you guys still wake it up. <laughs> so you guys can see where I entered. Uh, this candle pushed up above all of those, and, you know, I put my stop loss right onto the TDS, prints it there. For me, that was a little too tight. I kind of wanted to go a little bit lower so I was like looking I'll show you over here to this top area I was looking to kind of hit on this area so I wanted something more like this if you're looking here you can see kind of where that area 
of resistance for this level had formed and then has starting to kind of form a support area in here. So I figured if it had to come back down, it might touch a little below this TDS line. I wanted to be a little safer. So I went a little under that. Still not a bad stop loss at all. And as far as my you know risk to reward, where was I targeting? I was looking over to the left. So you can see all this area that I was targeting as far as uh, my next take profit. So that gives me, after looking at all that, I believe it was a 1 to 2.2, which is lovely. That's a really nice risk to reward. You'll see here in the middle, this pink one uh, is actually something that this is why I wanted to show you guys a live trade because lots of questions about why I stack trades. So the pink one here is like my version of a minor support and resistance area. And you can see why I kind of marked that. Lots of touches on here with price, here, here, and uh, you know, so we're back over in that area. Basically, what it's do, though is like a halfway point. If you're looking here in my tweet, in between my zone, so my entry point and my take profit, it's about halfway. And you can see there was a lot of areas of support and resistance that were kind of happening in the past. So for me, when I take these trades, what I like to do is stack my trades, and I, the meaning that I like to take two to four trades depending on what my stop loss looks like. In this case, my stop loss is pretty decent. I didn't mind the stop loss, especially considering my reward. So I took four trades initially and I'll show you those. What I do typically when I stack trades is I will look to basically secure myself as, as quickly as possible to not lose money on them. This pink line was my first take profit for two of my trades. So I'll post those here because those have actually already been closed out because it happened so quickly. It happened within like 15 minutes of me getting these trades before I even had time to get my actual computer up to record this because I was doing it off my phone. I will show you those two trades. Those are in profit. That gave me so far for the day $2,052.90. Those two hit that pink area of take profit. So I have now secured myself that if the other two trades I have running come back and hit my stop loss, I haven't lost money today. I won't lose money. I'll be slightly up for the day, actually. I won't be completely up, but I'll be a little bit up. And that is why I stack my trades like that. I like to be able to have option to enter in at different points and not having like one giant lot size that I have to go in and take partials and do the math and all that. Honestly, I'm a lazy trader. I don't like doing all that math and stuff. I like to be able to manage my trades quicker like that for me to see them and have multiple ones running is easier. Not everybody wants to do that and that's understandable, but a lot of you have asked me why I stack and that is why. I like having the option of having my four trades running and maybe I want to close out one or two of them at this area. Maybe this area would have given me a lot more and I only wanted to close one and potentially have a second one run here and maybe a third one run up here if it breaks a new higher high and then maybe have a fourth one that I let leave run. Uh, or maybe I want to have all four of them closed out at this point. I really thought about it. I was like, maybe I'll do that. I even thought about closing out all four here at one point because like I tell you guys all the time, I was like, don't be greedy, just be done. You could be done in 15 minutes for today. And I was at that point up like 4,000 something dollars. I could have just closed completely out and been done. But I decided to just take my 2,000, secure my two trades and let my other two run because I'm happy with the way the market looks, the way it's moving. So I'm going to allow it to stay. But that's why I do that. I also have gotten back in on two. I think I have two more that I just hopped back in. Yeah, so I currently have four running, which I will show you now. Uh, let me screenshot it on my phone so you guys can see what I'm talking about. And I will screenshot them. So these are the four I have running now. I took another two after I closed out the first two because when I saw the price come down here and touch on this area here, knowing that it was a support line and now it's pushing back up. I saw some good momentum pushing back up. I was happy with that. I was looking at it on the lower time frame too. I dropped down to the five to see what it looked like and it looked fine. I was happy with the way it was looking. I figured it was going to reject off of this area and form some support and hopefully push up and get to my take profit area here. So I have four trades now running aiming for this take profit area. Actually, you know what? My other two might be a little bit higher, but uh, yep, my other two are. 
double checking them. My other two are aiming for 35,000. So somewhere in this area. And that I will show you. There's a couple reasons I picked 35,000, mostly just because I think it's like a nice bank number. Like if I was a bank, that's where I would want to go. So what you'll see is it's actually a pretty good area anyhow, based on what's happening. You got lots of touches up here for resistance. Resistance here breaks through, kind of forms a little bit of support here, and then comes back down through. I was kind of liking the idea of 35,000. It may come up even higher than that, but like I said, not trying to be greedy with it. Basically what's happening now is it looks like this. I have take profit one, which has already technically been hit. That was this little pink guy. I have my take profit twos, which I have two trades that are left open running for that to hit this area here. And then I'm going to have a take profit three for the remaining two. If at some point, though, that I'm watching these trades and like I'm like, oh, I don't know. Like if I get up to my take profit two and I don't like the way the market's looking like something happens where I'm like things don't look good anymore or maybe it starts to reject off of this yellow line, which is one of my major support and resistance areas. So if I start to hit resistance there and I'm like, oh, this looks bad, bad news, I may just decide to close all of them out at that point. So that's why I like to stack. I just like to have the ability to kind of play around with my trades a little bit. You can absolutely do the same thing with one bigger trade running doing partials because I just don't like going in and having to figure out all the math and doing the numbers. For me, it's just easier to know I have two trades to close out here, two trades to close out there, two trades to close out at take profit three. I just like that better. That's my personal way of doing it. And I find that it helps me compound my account a little bit faster. I feel like it's easier for me to get in and out of trades quicker versus like holding one trade forever. I like to have things closed out, secured, and know it's there without me having to like trail things and stuff. It's like I said, just something that I've done over time. It's a habit of mine now. It's just the way I trade. So it's not at all for you guys to have to mimic or do. I'm not recommending anybody has to do that way. It's just a thing that I do. But I get so many questions about why I do it this way. And I mean, it's, it's something that has come up, I think, because I used to do so much um, what I would call like micro scalping or like super scalping, where I would be on very small time frames and trying to get in and out of those time frames and adjusting your numbers on your trade was like insane when you were trading volatile pairs like this. Like I would be literally in and out of a trade within a couple minutes. So sometimes those minutes would be really a big difference when you're trying to like put in your take profit and stop loss. So having multiple trades running was just easier for me. That's just how it's come about. And I just, I happen to like it now. It's my comfort zone for trading and that's my style. So not at all what you guys have to do, but I wanted to explain that a little bit because I had time to show you this. So as of now, I'll let the market run and do its thing. I'll insert here the 2000 that you can see that I'm already made. So I'm secured. Can't really lose anything at this point. I will show you the other four that are running and they're, you know, they're all in profit right now, like 600. To the first two are in 600 the other two are like 300 and I will check back in with you guys they're just you know I'm gonna let them run they're kind of an autopilot and I'll check back in once something happens I am checking in real quick just to show you guys what's happening it's been a little over an hour or so since the last time I checked in you can see it hasn't really done much it just kind of been pushing up a little bit and just kind of sitting around this uh, area of minor resistance that I had marked off. So I am assuming it's just going to kind of bounce in here a little bit. It is 12 o'clock in the afternoon on Eastern Standard Time, which is the time zone that US 30 runs on. It usually does do this around lunchtime. There's not a lot of volume happening all the time around 12 o'clock. London session is also closing right now, which means it's just US. London doesn't really affect the way the US 30 moves too much, but having those traders and banks and things involved in the market does help to contribute to volume. And you know, it, they're just not there now because it's five o'clock for them, they're done for the day. So this is pretty usual for US 30 to kind of like have a lull after the morning. And sometimes around like one, two, maybe three o'clock, you might get like a nice candle, a nice push. And that's just showing like, you know, some more volume that comes back in towards the end of the day with the market. 
So I'm going to hold for that. Like I said, I'm pretty good. I'm in profit. I'm already secure for the day. Like I can't lose money because the trades I do have running have already been covered by the 2000 I already made. Plus I'm in profit. So I'm fine to let this just kind of bounce around in this little zone. We'll see what happens. There's not really anything big happening also for the rest of the day as far as like news. And oh, you know, I'm realizing it as I say this now. I don't think I ever talk about news with you guys. So news is something I check every day and I, I should probably mention that. But you should do that. You should be checking your uh, news however you want to look at it. I use MyFX uh, News. So I have the MyFX book app on my phone. And in the morning, I'll bring it up and just look at news events for the day that would affect, for me in this case, the U.S. market. But there's events for whatever market you're trading. So for the U.S. 30, there's always news events. And the ones I really care about are anything high impact. And there's nothing for the rest of the day. I was looking at my book. I will screenshot it and put it in here for you. The only thing we have for the rest of today is some low impact news happening in 45 minutes. And, you know, that's it. The whole morning was pretty slow as far as news goes. We only had one medium impact news. That was earlier and, you know, not really anything too exciting there. So I'm fine with holding through on these trades. I mean, if I closed out now, I'd probably be about 5000 in profit for the day, which is an insane amount of profit for anybody to make in a period of three hours. For the sake of making the video and showing you guys how this works, I want to allow the trade to run. I probably would just have close out at 5,000 if it was up to me because I, I'm not greedy. I take my own advice all the time. I'm not that greedy when it comes to these trades. If the market's not like moving much, I like my time and my free time. I would close out and just be done for the day because $5,000 is like more than anybody needs in a day. So I would probably normally just close out here and be like happy to take my 5k and be done and not have to think about having trades open but because I want to show you guys how I would do this, I'm going to allow them to run. And I do still think it's kind of early in the day. There may still be like a nice push at the end of the day that I can get. So I'll allow it to go. I do have to close out my trades by three o'clock. So that's going to have to happen. I have plans to be somewhere at three o'clock. And then I have a live with you guys at six o'clock. So I do not want to be in the back of my head distracted with all of these like with trades running. And it's just not something I'm interested in doing. If I'm just kind of bouncing around in here and I'm slightly in profit, come 3 o'clock, I will close my trades out. Sorry, but this is what happens when you get the live trading stuff. You're going to have to just trade the way I would trade for that day. And every day I do trade a little bit different depending on how my day goes. We'll see what 3 o'clock brings. If I don't hit my take profit too by then, we'll reevaluate what the market's doing and I'll go from there. But, uh, you know, if I'm still bouncing around in here, I'm going to have to close them out because I just don't want them running and I don't want to have to think about them. I've already made my money for the day, so I'm fine to close out whatever I need to close out. So we'll see. And I think that's it for right now, guys. I'll check back in with you if something exciting happens or if it hits 3 o'clock before anything exciting happens. Okay. Bye. Okay, so just quickly showing you guys what happened. It is 4.02 for me right now. And I just wanted to show you where the market is. It really didn't do much at all. Just consolidated a bunch here. I just got a nice push here where it looks like it's giving me a nice little push up rejection off of this zone here and probably going to push up into there. A nice little rejection with there, a little bit more momentum than we've been seeing for the last few hours. Like I said before, I don't really have time to hold. Today's just not a day that I want to be holding these trades. I will show you here. I'm about $1,000 up on all four of my trades. That's another 4000 on top of the 2000 that I already had secured from earlier. So total for the day uh, after just closing them out, I am $6,848.70 in profit. I am more than okay with that. I am not going to sit here and hold through this just for another session. And sorry not to be this way but not to make a whole live trading video just to show you guys because that's not realistic this is really how I would trade I don't like to hold my trades like this if I don't have to and uh, you know hypothetically if there was some more movement here and it had hit here that would be different I probably would have let two of them run but there isn't and I have things to do I don't want to be thinking about the trades in the back of my head so so this is how I would trade these are the trades I took 
I will insert them here. This is a personal account of mine, so that's why uh, those of you who like follow my funded account, you guys know my lot sizes are usually a little bit different. They're usually a 0.25. Since this is a different size account I am trading with, it's 0.15 that I'm trading on. Anyway, that was my day trading.